You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today inaugurated the 11th edition of the Gulf Industry Fair GIF organized by Hilal Conferences and Exhibitions at Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center with the participation of local and international exhibitors. His Royal Highness affirmed that the national and Gulf industrial products are able to compete in international markets, hailing their role in promoting and their advanced level. His Royal Highness toured the fair sections viewing the developed industrial technologies in aluminum, solar power, environment protection, industrial metal and logistics. The Prime Minister expressed admirations for the international industrial technology presented in the fair, which confirms its growing popularity. His Royal Highness asserted the government's keenness on integrating economic sectors and ensuring their sustainability and its keenness on supporting and encouraging hosting fairs specialized in industry. He stressed the government's support to expanding industrial activity through providing the necessary infrastructure, energy resources and Bahraini workers. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister asserted that a strong economy is based on a diverse resource foundation for which industry is the main source expressing pride in the kingdom's achievements in the industrial sector. His Royal Highness noted the role of fairs and specialized events in the industrial sector in promoting the advantages, incentives and the Bahraini developed industrial infrastructure, expressing thanks to the organizers of the fair for their efforts. The Prime Minister activated the Sun logo which draws its energy from solar power. For his part, the Chief Executive Officer of Hilal Conferences and Exhibitions, Jabran Abdurrahman, expressed appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his continuous support to the Gulf Industry Fair and for inaugurating it. He noted that industrial companies aim to promote the Made in Bahrain slogan and the potentials of the country as well as to introduce global level industrial facilities.
A strong lineup of local and international exhibitors is showcasing products and services worth approximately 9 billion US dollars in multiple sectors that support industry in the GCC. Moreover, the launch of the Solar Utilities Network promoting renewable energy and commercial opportunities will also have a positive impact on Bahrain's industrial development. Local manufactured products are on display and the visitors from Bahrain and the Gulf states can see and it's a networking place and now they are giving importance to solar energy. Oil and gas industry to aluminum industry to downstream industries and uh, I see some uh, packaging which is a, a, a booming industry. 88 exhibitors from 18 countries represent the aluminium, energy and environment, industrial metals, industrial process and manufacturing, ports and maritime, industrial facilities and logistics, training for industry and fire and safety sectors. It's a great fair. I've looked around there, some interesting exhibits here, some great companies. Um, I've seen obviously the stands from Alba and Babco as you come in the door from Noga Holdings there. But yeah, there's some of the other smaller companies that provide a great deal of support to the power industry, um, to the renewables industry here in Bahrain. We have industry in Bahrain, we are creating jobs and we are adding value to our economy. Made in Bahrain manufacturers promote the country's capabilities in adding value to world-class industrial facilities which will attract more international and regional investors. Bahrain is a country that has good fundamentals for uh, having successful uh, technology industry and we find out that out of the different plants that we have in the world that Bahrain stands uh, some advantages over others. Chinese Bahraini company that is setting up uh, in Majal, they've taken around 2,000 square meters of space and they will be uh, recycling waste from uh, Saudi Arabia and exporting to the Far East and China. The three-day fair brings to the forefront the need for eco-industrial development considerations in supply, consultancy and growth. For the 11th year, the best industry fair in the Gulf region provides an excellent opportunity for industry decision makers, businessmen in the manufacturing and distributing sectors to meet and collaborate. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdul Ghaffour. PDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa patronized today a ceremony for distributing the medals that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa gave to Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, PDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and Defense Ministry's Under Secretary Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa on the occasion of the PDF's 50th anniversary. The Commander-in-Chief also honored Bahrain's Medal First and Second Degree to senior officials, commanders, and senior officers. He also awarded the First Class Medal of Competence to senior officers who. Have acquired the master's and doctorate degrees in military science, national defense, and civil universities. The BDF Commander-in-Chief then delivered a speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sharrufuni an al-taghi bukum al-yawm wa an anqil lakum tahiyyat wa taghdeer Sayyidi Sahib al-Jalala al-Qaad al-A'la liquwa al-Difa' al-Bahrain Jalala al-Malik al-Mufadda. In the beginning of the kalima أود وجه شكري إلى الأخوان الذين أنجزوا التمرين
تعبوي أمس بكفاءة واقتدار لجميع المسؤولين الذين شاركوا في التمرين وأعدوا له ولله الحمد مستوى التمرين كان جيد جدا والأداء أيضا وكذلك الإصابات بالأهداف ولله الحمد كلها كانت جيدة وجهني جلالة الملك نبارك لكم الأوسمة أيضا وأشكركم على أداءكم كل هذه السنين لنا أتمكن من حسبة كل واحد منكم كم سنة قدمها لقوة الدفاع لكن كلكم متغاربين في السنين اللي خدمتوها وقدمتوا أداء جيد القائد الأعلى هو مثالنا في هذا الشيء وهو المؤسس في قوة الدفاع وتباركنا بمشروعين رئيسيين من جلالته ثبتوا عروبة وإسلام هذا البلد العربي المشروع الأول كان مشروع جلالته الإصلاحي وهذا شمل المواطنين وشمل الأرض وشمل النظام وثبت عروبة هذه البلد ولله الحمد تمكنا من الانتصار على جميع الأخطار التي خطط لهذا البلد أن يمر فيها والمشروع الرئيسي الثاني هو تأسيس قوة الدفاع وقائدنا جلالة الملك الله هو اللي وضع الأولى لهذا الصرح الكبير اللي أنتم اليوم جزء منه ولله الحمد إنجازات قوة الدفاع كثيرة وكلكم تعرفونها لو بغيت أنا أختزلها ولخصها في كلمة أو كلمتين يمكن ما أعطيها حقها لكن أنتم عارفين الإنجازات كلها اللي حققتها قوة الدفاع في ميادين الشرف والرجولة في العمليات العسكرية وفي المناسبات الدولية وفي التحالفات الدولية ولله الحمد سمعت قوة الدفاع دائما كانت تسبق عمل الجندي البحريني فأنا كر شكري لكم كقادة ومسؤولين على هذه الإنجازات ولولا كفاءتكم وقيادتكم وخدمتكم واستعدادكم في جميع المجالات ما حققنا اللي حققت قوة الدفاع أتمنى لكم إن شاء الله التوفيق والنجاح في السنين القادمة إن شاء الله وإن شاء الله نلتقي دائما على الخير وكل عام وانتم بخير وأنا بعد أيضا في هذه المناسبة أستحضر أبطالنا الشهداء اللي قدموا أرواحهم فدا للوطن إن كانوا في قوة الدفاع أو حتى في القوات الأمنية The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, asserted that the efforts adopted by Doha aimed at the internationalization of the two holy mosques is evidence of the fall of the conspiracies of the Qatari regime to strike the stability of the region. In a series of tweets, Sheikh Khalid added that whenever a plan or a conspiracy by the Qatari regime fails, they return to the story of the internationalization of the two holy mosques. He also stressed that the Doha regime and its media rhetoric about the two holy mosques revealed the bad intentions, the political bankruptcy, and the moral fall of the regime. Sheikh Khalid noted that there is no religious center for any religion that pilgrims go to without being supervised by a sovereign state and Saudi Arabia is an example of honesty and commitment, care and protection. In his statements to the London-based Middle East newspaper, the Minister of Information Affairs and Bahrain Institute for Political Development's Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Ali Ramehi, praised the services the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in serving the pilgrims and securing their safety. He denounced all calls to insult Saudi Arabia, derogate its form, its honorable history in serving the Islamic nation, politicize religious rituals, and internationalize the two holy mosques. Ramehi affirmed 
confirmed that the efforts and facilitations provided by Saudi Arabia to the visitors of the two holy mosques are highly appreciated by the Islamic world. He noted the number of projects implemented to expand the two holy mosques as well as the security, organizational traffic and health services Saudi Arabia provides to its visitors to ensure their safety and security despite the schemes to commit acts of violence, terrorism and incitement to sedition and unrest. He stressed that the great Saudi efforts cannot be overlooked or negated except by the dismissive and malicious acts or by those who do not wish for the welfare of the Islamic nation, its unity, cohesiveness or its progress. He described the suspicious calls to internationalize the two holy mosques as unethical errors that bespeak of malice and political bankruptcy and ignorance about the historic role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in spreading the Islamic call and the values of moderation and fairness, establishing Islamic educational centers and providing humanitarian and relief assistance worldwide. The minister affirmed that Saudi Arabia is a cradle of Islam and the Mecca of all Muslims and that it has been historically honored to serve Hajj and Umrah performance led by its wise leadership who have dedicated the country's human and material capabilities and bringing together the Muslim nation in amity, fraternity and tolerance, aloof from sedition, hate, political or sectarian disputes. He added that the kingdom's values, status and sovereignty are stronger than any intrigues and will always be the red line that should not be undermined or overlooked. The Kingdom has made a new achievement winning a silver medal in the 10th International Invention Fair in the Middle East, which was held in Kuwait, and a gold medal in the Portuguese Inventors Association. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, honored the winners, hailing the efforts exerted to make this outstanding achievement. He affirmed the ministry's keenness on encouraging students to participate in international contests. He also expressed thanks to the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs for their efforts, wishing the project's organizers further success. The housing minister, Basim bin Yaqub al Hamad, affirmed following the directives of the coordinating committee chaired by His Royal the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, to strengthen partnership with the private sector to expedite the provision of housing units for citizens and to be committed to the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness in delivering long-term services. The minister met with a number of real estate development companies to discuss increasing the number of housing projects implemented by the private sector in the kingdom to cope with the progress made in the ministry application of the social housing scheme Mezaya. The minister stated that Mezaya was reinforced or rather reinforced the ministry's communication with the private sector to discuss the available options to increase the number of units offered by real estate development companies including the provision of facilities and fast tracking procedures to ensure the sustainability of the scheme. In cooperation with ISKCON Bank, the ministry is conducting studies to reduce the minimum number of candidates to benefit from the program. The real estate developers welcomed the government's desire to strengthen partnership with the private structure stressing that the private sector should play its role in supporting and providing housing projects. The Representatives' Council held today its weekly session chaired by First Deputy Speaker Mr. Ali Al-Aradi. The Council addressed the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments on a number of cases filed before the civil, criminal or legislative courts during the past four years and about the properties managed by both the Sunni and Jafari Endowment Councils. The Council also asked the Minister of Health about the number of sickle cell disease patients in Bahrain and the inauguration of the Bank of Bahrain and Kuwait Health Centre in Hid. The Council, meanwhile, discussed the final report of the Parliamentary Inquiry Committee on the unsponsored labour the problems resulting from it and the reasons that led to it. The Council approved the proposals and recommendations of the committee and transferred them to the government. The Council also reviewed two requests. The first was the issuance of a statement praising the Saudi sponsorship of the two holy mosques and denouncing Qatar's call for the internationalization of them. The second was issuing a statement on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain Defense Force. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States of America, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, hosted a dinner banquet marking the Golden Jubilee of Bahrain Defense Force and the 70th anniversary of the Bahraini U.S. military relations. He congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Commander in Chief of the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa on the occasion. The ambassador highlighted the achievements of the. 
Bahrain Defense Force, affirming that the support of His Majesty the King has contributed to making the BDF an example of professionalism, effectiveness and high combat readiness. He also stressed the importance of reinforcing strategic Bahraini-American partnership to achieve common goals. The former commander of the 5th Fleet, Vice Admiral Kevin Donegan, praised the bilateral military relations and strong partnership. He noted that His Majesty the King's wisdom, which led to the establishment and development of the BDF, the guests praised the professionalism of the BDF and the fundamental role played by the Kingdom of Bahrain as an important U.S. ally outside of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight as we gather to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the inception of the Bahrain Defense Force and the 70th anniversary of the U.S.-Bahrain military relations. As time passes, one realizes the importance of establishing relationships with those that share common values, peace, prosperity, coexistence. It is through the creation of partnerships that nations are set on parallel trajectories. And in the case of Bahrain and the United States of America, a path towards regional order and stability. Achieving common interests and shared goals could be effectively and efficiently attained through the formation of strategic alliances. Our militaries are fine examples of that success. And through sharing interests and values throughout the decades, we worked together, often fought shoulder to shoulder, to defend our nations and keep our enemies in check. Whether fighting for the liberation of Kuwait in 91, where the Royal Bahraini Air Force conducted airstrikes in Iraq, and Bahrain hosted US military operations during that war, or being the first country in the world that joined the US in its coalition against Daesh. And in March 1987, when an Iraqi jet aircraft fired missiles at USS Stark during its mission in the Arabian Gulf, we were among the first rescue teams to arrive. Bahrain, this strategic alliance and every single US-led operation in the region that we had participated in required a high level of military professionalism and preparedness. The BDF today not only positions itself as a capable partner, but also as one that the U.S. can rely on. It all started with the vision His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had at the time when His Majesty was Crown Prince. His Majesty realized that for Bahrain to protect itself and develop a nation requires a professional defense force that's efficient, effectual, and capable. During the recent official visit of His Royal Highness Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, who, for the record, also is a military academy graduate and previously assumed the post of Commander-in-Chief of the BDF. His Royal Highness recently announced the renew renewal of the DCA for 15 years, as well as the purchase of fighter jets and equipment amounting to $4 billion. This is a clear message sent to both our friends and our enemies of where we stand today and where are we heading. Both in Washington and in Manama, we realize the importance of establishing relationships with those that share 
not only our interests, but also our beliefs in a safer, more prosperous world. We continue to make the partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States is strong and enduring and, and unique uh, for a number of reasons. While the U.S. Middle East force had a humble beginning in Bahrain in 1949, the lasting and mutual beneficial partnership has strengthened and grown for over seven decades. When Amir Issa bin Salman al-Khalifa charged his eldest son, Hamad bin Issa al-Khalifa, with the establishment of the Bahraini Defense Force, the future king chose to build the BDF officer corps around a cadre of promising young leaders. The General Directorate of Traffic is keen on facilitating the services provided and on opening branches for citizens and residents. More details in this report. In continuation of the General Directorate of Traffic's efforts to facilitate services for citizens and residents, two branches in Citra Mall and Hamad Town Roundabout 17 were opened to provide traffic services. The General Directorate of Traffic is keen on implementing its strategy to develop all traffic services provided, including the time period of completing paperwork and the satisfaction of citizens and residents with the procedures. With the director's firm belief that electronic services are faster and better, there are some citizens that prefer to complete their paperwork the traditional way. In previous years, the security center located in Amhara Governorate was opened, which provides traffic services. Following that, the security center at Lulu Hypermarket in Head was opened. During last year and the year before that, 100,000 correspondents were completed in Amharag and many more in Hamad Town and Sutra Mall. The two new centers in Hamad Town and Sutra provide all traffic services. This development plan is in line with the continuous work to develop electronic services. In 2017, the directorate completed more than a one and a half million procedures, 218,000 of which were electronic, which can be accessed through the directorate's application and the e-government website. We used to go to the General Directorate of Traffic in Isa Town, where many people go, which makes finding a parking space a problem and a time-consuming process. Now they've opened branches in some of the governorates, including Sitra. The procedure takes only a few minutes, making it easier for citizens. When I heard about the opening of the center in Sitra Mall, I was very pleased. I finished my paperwork quickly, and for that I would like to thank the General Directorate of Traffic. It is important to note that the actions taken to develop traffic services represent an essential aspect of ensuring traffic safety, as well as saving citizens and residents' time and efforts.